How's it going? All right. Well, I'm hoping you're seeing me if you are. Um, told you I was going to do a video on how to do a fucking Turbo Master. So this is how I built a Turbo Master for, I think it was under 20 bucks. I'll show you what you need to have and what it's going to look like. And we'll go from that point. But this is it on the truck. I'm not actually going to take mine apart because I have mine set for where I want it. But I'll show you what it looks like and then I'll show you what you need for parts and where you can get them and stuff. But, alright. Look. There's a spring. The nut. The rod. Alright, what I did was, this is a stock mount for the stock wastegate. So all I did was come over to here. There we go, there you go. And where the wastegate was, I cut it off with a sawzall. I grinded it a little flat just so it had a good place to sit. And this washer right here, I went to the trustworthy hardware. So basically any hardware store, they should have a picture of, or they should have a bunch of different springs. Just to kind of find a heavy duty one. Think of like a valve spring or something like that. Just something that's going to be all rugged to it. All right. And then get two or three washers, stick them on the end on this end, and then find any old nut. I had two on here. One was a GM nut to make it so it wouldn't back off, but apparently the GM nut backed off and the regular nut stayed. So you got to keep an eye on this because that's where the boost gauge lays off too. Because you'll be able to see when you start losing boost and all you have to do is come turn it up again. Have a boost gauge before you put this in because when I first set it up, and I put it in my first run, I was pushing 25, 26, something like that, which is retarded for one of these motors with nothing done to it. So, have a boost gauge. I've been running 15, spiking 18 pounds under a hard acceleration for over a year on stock everything, and I haven't had an issue, so you should be fine with that. Everybody says don't run it more than 10 or 12, and I haven't had an issue with 15. So you go with the consensus, I guess. But, alright. What I use for the bar, any Walmart, any auto parts store, pretty much anywhere it sells battery hold downs. I grabbed one of those, bend the ear out. This one's bent because it's been on my floor, but then this ear out a little bit. You get a pair of really good fucking snips. Cut a little bit off so you can slide it into the hole on the wastegate. Alright. What I mean by doing that is. If you look back here, see the flapper? This is what you're trying to keep closed. Alright, so you bend that out so you can slide it through the hole. You want to leave it a little bent so it's kind of like hooked so you can lock it in. You run it through, stick it through the hole, and then put your spring and stuff on. Okay, like I said, under 20 bucks is what I paid for this, or you can spend a hundred and something bucks for a Turbo Master and the spring and everything else, and they tell you exactly how to set it for 10 PSI. You have a boost gauge. Set it yourself. You don't need to waste the money. I mean, seriously. 20 bucks, I did the same thing. Um, if you have the other turbo, that the diaphragm thing's up here, not down here, not like the long way, all you have to do is take that apart, cut it off, put an eye, eye, eye loop through it, so it's hanging down like this, and just get a spring that's got a hook on this, like an exhaust spring off a dirt bike or a snowmobile, and hook it up. And it does the same thing. And then you control the eye bolt by how much you have the pressure up on it and down on it. Sort of just like not on the end of this. Like I said, though, really important, guys, you need to have a boost gauge because. You don't want to blow your motor apart. I mean, if you got head bolts, you can play a little bit more. You know, I see a lot of guys saying they're running 20, 20 plus, but I'm pretty much maxed out for stock head bolts. I mean, I'm pushing it. I don't really hammer on it that much anymore. So, food for thought.
And then I think our next video is I might do the custom switch panel and then I'll do the high idle mod and I'm still debating on turning up the fuel. I got I really gotta get my pyro gauge before I do that though. Maybe change the cold air intake around. And, oh, also thinking about remounting these somewhere else. They're loud, but they're not quite loud enough outside. And then I can put my stock overflow back in and stuff out in that fucking thing over there. Yeah. Um, I got some other stuff we're going to be doing this summer to it, but I'm going to play with some of the mods. And when the axle goes in, it should be fun. I'm working a deal now. I'm hopefully trading a boat motor for a 16 foot fucking Grady White six person, whatever. I don't fucking know. It's worth the fuck more than that motor is. So, all goes well. I'm going to trade that for a nice 4x4 four wheeler and go and get a GoPro. We'll start doing some ATV videos and shit like that because we do some crazy stuff when we're out on those. So, stay tuned. Hopefully everything goes to plan, and I'm going to start trying to do videos again more and more. I know I got out of it for a little bit. It's just started working, and I didn't have the time. When I was doing security, I had all the time in the world because, I mean, I didn't do anything. Now it's, I get out of work, I'm tired. So, I'll see what I can do, guys. But thank you for all you that have been with me the longest. And I hope to start putting some better stuff up soon. Um... I don't know if we're going to keep going with the fucking stoner talk and stuff like that. I haven't quite decided yet, but we'll see what happens. All right, you guys all have a good day.